So as we sit here uh, waiting to die because the lights in Cameron's house, yeah, we're at Cameron's house, are flickering at his dinner table, I think Greg and I are going to die. I'm scared. Uh, just a quick update. Do Dan, you know, Dan's already been taken. Dan's been taken. <laughs> no, Dan couldn't make it tonight. He had plans. He has school and whatnot. Um, it's Wednesday evening. I texted Greg <laughs> three hours ago, but when you come to my house, uh, uh, sorry if you hear creaking or doors opening or dogs barking or anyone talking in the background. We're at my house in my living or in my dining room, but when you come to my household, you find that uh, you always like we always usually congregate and meet in the kitchen or living room or dining room, and we just sat here for two hours. Like and like Greg's got school in like eight hours, so we got to pump this out. Greg, you're going to share a story that this is the second time we've even started this, but we had to restart the podcast because I I helped out my sister's friend. She wrapped my hand uh, for kinesiology, which is Dan doing. So that's pre- she's here practicing on us. Dan practicing on other people, I guess. But uh, yeah, so this is the podcast episode nineteen. Last minute in episode nineteen. Last minute in episode nineteen. Second time with Cam and Greg. So. Uh, when Dan's with us, he keeps us normal and on track. When Greg and Cameron are here, you don't know what you're going to get. We don't even know if we're going to talk about hockey. <laughs> it could be just the non-hockey podcast. Yeah, it'll be, like, it's last man in of whoever gets the last word in. That's, that's what oh, it's going to be. It's but Greg, you told be. me a story. You shared it again, though, because this is quite the interesting story. So, on my way to uh, the podcast about two hours ago. Okay, dude, this is really creepy. You're like house... There's, like, shit moving everywhere. What? Where? Like, I don't know. Like, that chair hasn't moved. No, dude, but, like, this tablecloth just keeps, like, moving in and out. Greg, don't worry about it. <laughs> you guys, by the way, <laughs> um, my house is old. Um, it's kind of creepy, and by kind of, I mean very. And if you hear voices, like, talking over me, if you can even hear this, well, <laughs> just go with it. And if you're actually listening to it, I somehow managed to get the podcast out without being abducted by a demon. If there isn't a podcast next week or ever again, Greg and I have been taken. We're dead from demons. And Dan, I don't know if Dan knows how to edit a podcast, so I don't know if we'll ever have a podcast ever again. Let's not, like, leave it on that note. Well, let's not start it on that note. Being like, this could be the last one ever, because that's, like, leading people into thinking, hey, it's December 21st, 2012. Except it's November 26th, 2014. It's the 20th. 20, holy shit, it's already the 26th. Mm-hmm, 29 yeah. days till Christmas. 30 days till World Juniors. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. There's nothing I love more than World Juniors in this world. Speaking Not of even world, women. I like <laughs> women and stuff sometimes. <laughs> All the time. Actually, Dude. Cam's like dream day is laying by himself in his bed watching World Juniors. Not wishing a woman was there because she might nag him. Or ask me stupid questions. Uh, speaking of that, yeah. <laughs> speaking of world, That's Switzerland, get it right. <laughs> Come on, SWI, look at it. Uh, SWI, is it? Oh, Swiss. No, it's SUI. Yeah, they right. changed it. Sorry. Yeah, no, right. hey, hey, yeah. they changed it recently. I or think, like, so. or like, what can mean? That's fucking Canada. I'm done. Yeah, can. What can? <laughs> get out of my life. Speak of world juniors, quick. Po Horvat officially named to like uh, Vancouver. Yeah. He's staying up. Yeah. And, oh, I was going to talk about this because we didn't get a time to talk about the last podcast. We didn't get a time Because somebody decided to argue about Dallas. I'm sorry, guys. It was me and Dan. I blame me more, though, because I'm like, nope, I'm not letting this happen. Um, what I was going to say was World Juniors, their wish list to get players on the team, Anthony Duclair. Did I even hit play on this? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Woo! Don't worry. Don't worry. We're yeah. four minutes in. <laughs> it was Anthony Duclair, New York Rangers, Bo Horvat, Vancouver oh. Canucks, um... Uh, who else is it? Jonathan Durain, Tampa Bay Lightning, and there was one more in there. Who else is a rookie for Canada? Oh, would it be a rookie or would it be somebody that's already played? No. Would it be Nathan McKinnon? No, no. There was another one. I'm uh, sorry. Would it be Would it be Bennett? Just he's injured? No. Ah, dang it. So, Durain? Durain? Duclair? Horvat? Duclair? Duclair. Ekblad? Yes. I think so. I think. Okay. Either way, that wish, that wish list is quite long. Yeah, that just mm. shows you the talent Canada has. And the fact that we can't win a gold medal even though our talent is so deep when you think about it that way. We have – it's not that – I believe anyone who they can take, if they put the right team together or even if they get the right system and coaches, they can win. It's just that the emergence of the, the European teams are so much more now because hockey 
it used to be oh biggest team bruising team like when then when they went on that streak of what five five six five, five streak gold medals five straight, yeah. they were big team they were fast they were built like basically from not really the back out but you didn't want to cross the blue line because you were scared and if and it was always like big guy little guy big guy little guy big guy or big big little well, little the other thing that they had though with those teams was they had the ability if you were down a goal to get another goal back exactly and they always had those guys whether it was Everly or um, fuck, I'm going to f- forget his name. Like, Cogliano was huge in his years with the G-team. Or, I don't want to be, it's going to sound totally Homer, but Giroux and Marchand that year that they played yeah, together, that was tremendous. unbelievable. Yeah. They were very good. Uh, They've always had that go-to and we guy. Just, we haven't had a hero in the last five years. Like, if you think about it, mm-hmm. you can go through the list of teams minus 2000. Five because that team was just stupid. Yeah, that team like, shouldn't have been. That, that yeah, it was a year that wasn't. It was yeah. like it was when it was happening. It was the men, oh, yeah. and when they were playing, it was the myth. And now it's the legend. Because yeah, like I'm getting just, goosebumps talking about. I just remember, and that was in our backyard. That was in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Yeah. Right? Did you go? I, I went to a game. I didn't go. I went when it was them against Finland, and they won seven one. Oh, sweet mama, and you, damn. Like, you, just, <laughs> you saw the talent that every guy on that team had, and you're like. Shit. Like yeah. you could just tell you were experiencing something special. Yeah, it was which just you were. it like, was. It was unbelievable. And, and yeah, you're very right about like just having that go-to guy. Yeah, we just don't like it hasn't and a lot of people thought, okay, maybe it's McDavid. Like you could talk about how Brain Shen was tremendous in his junior oh, career. Yeah. Right? Like that. with the World Juniors. But he never scored big goals. It was always he was a consistent scorer, but he just never he Not never came else. up when it needed. Like, Jordan yeah. Everly came up time after time after time. It's like, when he needed a goal in that two... Was he three years or two years on the team? He was two years on the team. I well, every I time they needed a goal... Three. No, I know. I'm certain it's two. Maybe three, but I'm not sure. But every time in those years that he played, they needed a goal, he was on the ice. And he... Yeah, if scored. he didn't score, he made sure someone else scored. Well, you could, he got it you done. could track back to the Russia game. Yeah. That, that semifinal where he scored with four seconds left. Yes. You could track back to the U.S. game where, yes, they won silver, but he was the only reason why they were in that overtime. Yes. Because he came back and scored two on his back. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you have Jordan Eberle. Like, Brain Shen scored a lot of goals, but he never really seemed to come up big. And that's that was the year when I believe Canada went up 3 nothing on the Russians in the gold medal game. And then <gasps> they lost, lost 5-3 because they gave up 5 in the and third. And it just seemed they lacked leadership. Let's go back to 2008. I believe, yeah, 2000, ooh, 2008. Or 2007. Who was on the team? That was the year Jonathan Taves had all those shoes. 2007, games. Finland. Okay. Or like, Lexan Sweden, sorry. Look at, like, just the guys, like, Brian Little was on that team. Yep. Uh, Taves was on that team. I'm going to f- butcher Chris Letang? Chris Letang, no. No, he wasn't? No, because he was drafted in oh, 06. That's a while ago. He was drafted in 06. Okay, yeah. okay. That's um, fine. Just, like, going through the list of what, there was a bunch of leaders on that team. Mm-hmm. And it seems the guys we've been getting later aren't, like, lately aren't leaders either. No, they're not like a cut above. Like they're not a la mold of obviously Jonathan Taves, Captain Serious. But yeah, I, I'm trying to think. Even who is like, just go team? through that. Go through that stretch. Like let's let me look it up right yeah, now. Yeah, of course. Let, let me look up that stretch because that stretch is unbelievable. That was what 2005, 2009, correct? Yes. That we won goals. Yeah. Like here, while you're doing that, I'll just say some uh, uh, about uh, just regarding the World Juniors and back. Yeah, you had players like Jonathan Taves, and I guess Brian Little wouldn't really count, but either way... Why doesn't Little each... count, though? He's been a legitimate NHLer for a long time. Oh, no, no, he's been, been a leader, leader. But he's been a... Like, sure, he's well, not Oh, I'm not counter-arguing whatsoever. I inco- okay, that's a... Fi- it's an unfair comparison but to I say, might, in comparison other... to Jonathan Taves, yeah. because he's he is... He's literally Captain Clutch in terms of like well, for sure. not and even producing just he steps into the mold of hey if you need a guy to block shots he will block that shot if oh, you yeah. guys need passing passing he will do it we we're from the same area in same town in like Winnipeg Manitoba where Jonathan Taves grew up he literally grew up and skated on the same rinks we skate on all the time and Jonathan Taves I heard when he was younger that he was like running circuits in his basement like circuit training since he was 10 and his parents when he was younger I believe, I'm not sure if this was the exact order, but in the first period, he was only allowed to pass. In the second period, he was only allowed, uh, he had to play defense. Yeah. And in the third period, depending how the game was going, he went back to forward or stayed on D. As like a 10 to 13 year old, that's or 8 to 13 year old, that's unbelievable. I can't do that now in beer league. I last one period and I'm minus three. So. But the other thing with Jordan Taves too, it was determination and his parents pushed him. 
there were times where he would fall asleep in class and his parents were like, yeah, that's okay. He was up at 4 a.m. shooting pucks against his garage. That's what he would do. He would get up at 4 and stay up till like 10 and just sh- and he would fall asleep in class because they knew he he just he had it. And that's the thing. To go back to what we were talking about. Yes, of course. Uh, in 2009, this is their team. Oh, I know where you're going with this. Go Jamie Benn. Ooh, yeah. Oh, Zach Boychuk. Okay. Patrice Cormier. Stefan Della Rovere. Chris D- 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 Domen- D. Domenico. No, D. Domenico. Jordan Eberle. Tyler Ennis. Angelo Esposito. Corey- Cody Hodgson. Evander Kane. Brett Son. Jo- John Tavares. And Dana Tyrell. Now, if you just- but Dana Tyrell broke his leg. That's yeah. why Evander Kane made the team. Mm-hmm. Wow. What weirdos we are. <laughs> How do we know this? <laughs> and the captain that year was Thomas Hickey, who was drafted by the LA Kings and never really panned out. And, and now he's now on- with the Islanders. Mm-hmm. They're doing great this year. Yeah. The other players are also on that team. P.K. Subban. Alex Petrangelo, Tyler Myers, Ryan Ellis, Keith Ollie, uh, Colton Tubert, and Cody Galoob. Um, excuse me, can you repeat those players on the D core that were on D <laughs> on the Olympics, let alone that World <laughs> Junior team? Yeah. Yeah. Who was that? Petro PK? Petro PK, Tyler Myers, Colton Tubert, Keith Ollie, Ryan Ellis, uh, Cody Gullabeff, and Galibuff, Thomas yeah. Hickey. Wow. Mama, who's in goal? And goal was Chet Picard and Dustin Tukowski. Hey, not bad. But I guess, like, we can talk about him now. Head coach of that team, Pat Quinn, who passed away this week. Yeah, and great. I guess before we move on, we'll quickly touch on Pat Quinn. Of course. My favorite NHL coach, my most memorable coach, because I was a Leaf fan in the early 2000s. And, like, I never thought of the Leafs without thinking of Pat Quinn just because it's just how tremendous he was. And if you think about it, like, he was the only coach of that era, of the, the current era NHL, that really – had a hold of every single player. Like he never, he was a coach for seven years in Toronto. Made the playoffs six times. The one year he didn't, they missed out by one point in a shootout final game of the year between New Jersey and New York Islanders. When New Jersey decided not to play Martin Broder, was that in two thousand ten? That was in two thousand six. Two thousand six. Yeah, in the old five oh six. Was season. that the one where Ole Jokinen scored? Somebody scored in a shootout, and it just ended all the Toronto's hopes to make the playoffs because. Um, New York Islanders got oh, the Oh, that's not the one I They got the extra point, and they didn't mm-hmm. deserve the extra point, I felt. But that was the only year he didn't make the playoffs, and he took a terrible 2006 Toronto team that far. He was just a great coach. He was a no-bullshit coach. He like he every, held you accountable for yeah. for your actions, and he... He, I, he I, gained the respect of everyone. I don't think you can ha- find somebody who has... Like, I'm sure you can, because everyone can say bad things about someone. Of course. But around the league... When he passed, when, with the passing of him, it just sounds like everybody has nothing but nice things to say with the way that he just kept himself. Like, he's always very professional, very nice. And, like, even Don Cherry had, well, had choice words for him because he dirty hit to Bobby Orr. I don't know if you've ever looked at it. but I it, haven't. He, he has, runs at Bobby Orr, hits him with an elbow, and Don Cherry goes off on him one time during Coach's Corner. But I still think Don Cherry has his respect just because of the way that he was able to pretty much take teams like t- Toronto and just make them into contenders. Like, by all accounts and purposes, Toronto didn't have the strongest of teams, but he made them good. And the other thing, too, is he probably ran the least complex practices. I read an article by uh, Steve Simmons, and he just kind of said it was a simple X's and O's practices, nothing hard. He didn't really enter... He wasn't a master of the game. He just was a master of people and knew how to get the best out of everyone every night. And that's one of the things he did. And if you look at his resume, his resume is pretty unbelievable. Oh. Olympic gold, world junior gold, under 18 gold. Just Multiple missing. coaching rec- records, namely he was a coach of the Flyers in 79 for a couple seasons, but in 79, 80, mm-hmm. I believe this is a record that still stands. I'm not too sure, but they had 35 straight wins. That's they, crazy. 35. They lost the Stanley Cup that year. Yeah. He's well, played, they- and then he lost again with... Vancouver when they played against the Rangers. Oh, that was way back. Yeah. Dang. Mm-hmm. And then, 94. obviously, mm-hmm. the closest he ever got with Toronto was 2002 against Carolina when they made it to the East Final. But he was just an, uh, he just had the ability to get the most out of his players, and you might not have the best players, but he was just able to do whatever. And the thing was, uh, I was just listening to other people, and just kind of the things that he would do um, it was really weird. One time he wrote the same guy's name twice. I think it was Michael Renberg twice on the game sheet, so he wasn't allowed to play Robert Reichel. He could... So yeah, they, Toronto had to play with one less player because he just wrote the same 
guy in twice. Because he didn't want to play the one guy. No, just wrote him in. Just thought, because they had Robert Reichel and Michael Renberg on the same team. Okay. So he just kind of mixed the two names up and wrote Renberg twice. So Reichel couldn't play because he wasn't on the game sheet. Weird. Yeah. That's so, interesting. And, like, he, he had... Um, they never, they didn't say what his illness was, but they, he had mind, pro- um, I think some mind problems, he had like oh, all, really? Alzheimer's or uh. dementia. That's just me assuming stuff because he was really bad at remembering names and he would always call him son and stuff like that. But it, like with Pat Quinn and with this passing, it made me a little sad because he's kind of the coach that I've always wish I had just cause motivator got the most out of you. And he's like. When I think of Pat Quinn, I think of the Leafs because he was a coach of the Leafs when I started really paying attention yeah. to hockey. And I think that's with a lot of people of us. Mm-hmm. And that black eye from when he got hit, hit in the In face. the bay with the oh, puck. Yeah. yeah, on the bench. And he just had a black eye. And I was like, yeah. oh, well, that's Pat Quinn. He's just, he was tough as nails. He knew how to get the most of his players. And, boy, like, he, he like, okay, this team is great. But, like, he was able to command this team to still gold medal. And he was able to relax the team when they were down by a goal with less than 20 seconds left to find a way to score a goal against Russia and push them into that gold medal game. And, like, it's just that's who he was. He was a winner, just unfortunately was never a winner, never got to lift the Stanley Cup, which is honestly a tragedy because he's just – he's got to be – well, he's still my favorite coach. And I think a lot for a lot of people, he's got to be one of the best coaches of all time. Just – Shattered winning records. He was probably the best Toronto coach, maybe minus Pat Burns. But even then, Pat Burns couldn't win a championship. But it was just players respected him, and I think that he. Uh, it's definitely. It's going to be a while a before world. you. Oh, he great lost, lost a big one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while before you find a coach who's as good of a player coach. I mean, obviously now you're you're going into another thing. Yeah, he was a great players coach. Like, but I never understood what's a coach's coach. But what a what uh sorry back I just lost my thought there for a moment um was now that you're going into the era the era that we're in where it's so technical and it's like oh advanced Corsi and player plus four Fenwick and all this fancy stats not that he couldn't succeed at all because you definitely can it would it'll just be interesting to see if a, a player the only coach that I could think that would even be near him at the moment in terms of getting the best out of his players, even though he doesn't have a good squad, would be Barry Trotz. You know what? Like, you could say that. Well, oh, wait. Barry it? Trotz at Nashville. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. I still thought... Or, but yeah. Even I thought he was... Even Pierre gets yeah. a lot of his players. But yeah. I would say the coach that makes me think kind of bullshit about analytics, bullshit about that, would be Daryl Sutter of the Los Angeles Kings. Granted, he has a great team, but he has, gets the most out of his players right now, despite the fact that he has... Probably still the best team in the NHL. Yeah, and now, it's like one thing to say, "Hey, you have all this talent," but it's another thing to put all that talent together and make them win. Because before Sutter was there in 2012, they didn't have that championship. So that's the only guy that I would say kind of resembles Pat Quinn, even in a sense. But even then, like he's Pat Quinn is Pat Quinn. Like you're just never going to have that kind of persona again in the NHL. Just and he was, you know, what he was the perfect fit in Toronto because. Never really said much. Just kind of was around. Like it Phil just, Kessel, kind of. Oh. I hate that. What's up with... I, I feel like this is turning into a Toronto podcast. I don't oh. mind. I don't care at all. <laughs> um, but why is that, especially in Toronto media, where it's like, yo, if you don't talk to us every game, we're going to throw you under the bus or the it's, metro. Why is because that? Because if they're very entitled, I feel. I feel... And I know one of our friends, Tyler, is going to hate me because I always blame the media, but the media, I understand they need a story. Well, hey, we're not with Dan, so Dan, I'm not throwing Dan on the bus, but Dan has a visceral hate for media. If anything goes wrong with the team, he blames the media sometimes, but yeah. Tyler, sorry, you, he'll like, be on here. We're going to have him on as a guest, eventually. he'll be a good one. But like, I, and he hates the fact that sometimes I blame the media, but the media blows things out of proportion in Toronto because they can and they need a story, and I understand that. I understand that sense because at one point I wanted to be a journalist and wanted to join media, but, mm-hmm. and I totally understand the idea of getting a story, but sometimes when you pick and you pick and you pick, there's like no point and stuff like salute gate comes out where it's like really, <laughs> you didn't salute. We, we talked about it last podcast. It's just one of the stupidest things ever. So there's that. And then there's also just this whole Phil Kessel thing with him not wanting to talk to the media. You know what? I can totally cool. just, okay. yep. Who was the running back of the team last year that uh, won the Super Bowl in the NFL? Marshawn Lynch. Do you, did you know that he has an anxiety talking to people? 
Yeah. That's why he does not want to take interviews. Maybe Phil Kessel's the same way. Did you speaking of Marshawn Lynch now that we're on it really quick, did you see his interview after the game this week? No. Where I am not sure who the Seahawks played or this past uh, last Sunday. Okay. He was like he was literally giving one word down. So they're like, Hey Marshawn, uh, next week you're facing a really uh, run heavy defense. Uh, they're very good on the run, protecting it. What do you think of that run? Or what do you think you're gonna do? And he just leaned in and he's like, Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like, like How just... do you think of uh, Russell Wilson's performance today? Yeah. <laughs> like, he literally said, like, eight yes, and then they're like, like, oh, we don't want to, he doesn't want to talk to us, so we will leave him alone. And would, that's it. It ended. Yeah. And would you rather just have Phil Kessel being there, like, yeah, we gave it 110% tonight. He you doesn't want to be there, and you well. can tell he doesn't want to be there. Exactly. So. Like, what are you gaining from that? You're not gaining anything. And, there's and play- that's the problem. And there's players that, uh, uh, other guys, like Blake Wheeler, that never shies away from... The media. Which is fine. And like, Toronto has guys to, like that too. Like you don't the thing is you don't need to be a media guy. And honestly, what Phil Kessel does and what I respect him so much for, it's like, I don't need to impress you with my fancy words. I'll impress you with my fancy play. Like, exactly. Of, I can totally justify that contract. You're paying Phil Kessel eight eight, eight million? million. Eight million. Just eight even? Yeah. Okay, eight million dollars to put the puck in the net and produce offense. That's exactly what he's doing. You don't pay him to do media interviews or any. I think that contract's fine. I had this thought today mm-hmm. because I tweeted at a guy, Steve yeah. Dangle, and I said, "Steve Dangle's basically the awesomest guy." Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would Toronto be interested in Evander Kane? Because he's clearly not hitting his potential here, and I don't think he. Ever he's on will. pace for twenty-one goals, guys. After this week. So like, and I'm not hating on. I think Evander Kane has a ton of talent. I just think he's just not fit to play here. In I terms think of he'll, the media or in terms of... I just of think he'll blossom in another team where he has different players to play with in a more gung-ho offense like Toronto. And I think if we got somebody in return, a la maybe JVR or something I like that. I love how you said yeah. that because that's who I was going to yeah. say. <laughs> but if you think about it, Kessel last year had more assists than goals. Did he? Yeah. Well, he gets you, do oh, shots on net, though. Like, I guess. okay, for how much disrespect Kissel, Ke- Kissel, Kessel, yeah. Kessel, yeah. Kessel gets, he's still pretty much a point-per-game producer just like Matt Sundin was. Of course. He'll eventually hit 100 points, but he has no number one center and really doesn't really have a number one winger with JVR there. No. But if you think about it, if you were to give him Evander Kane, a guy that could, you get a threat on the left side and a and threat a guy on the right who can side, keep up with you. Yeah. Like, that would be crazy for Toronto. And who would realistically? Let's. I, I'm who Kevin Chevel Day off. You're oh. Dave Nonis. What What are we gonna? Uh, I would say obviously it, the main piece is Kane. I would say Kane and Kessel. Kane. Well, no, Kane and JVR. J- sorry, yeah, Kane and JVR. Okay, sorry, pardon me. And then, so you look at that and you say, okay, how do you even know? Fits under both teams' caps. Toronto would just take on a little bit more cap. We would lose a little bit of cap. And yeah, of course, Evander. What might go Toronto's way would be. Um, would there be a prospect involved? It would be a prospect. Who be, would be the prospect? Do you think, like Stuart Percy? Do no, we need no, 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 Toronto? No, 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 no. Do we? It would. Not, it would not be. It Percy. would not be a a grade. It would probably be a C grade guy from Toronto. It might be like a guy like Tyler Biggs coming back our way. Oh, from when? Okay, yeah, because yeah. Toronto. Like, let's be honest here. Evander Kane is a higher touted prospect than JVR. Yes, it just, it, it's in the money. Like, yeah. okay, maybe Kane doesn't deserve his contract. Besides that, but maybe it's there. That's a million dollars difference between the two players. So you got to figure that he's a million dollars better than JVR. Yes. You know that maybe points are... Of course, yeah. But in that sense, then Evander Kane... So just Evander Kane going there and maybe like a third. And then maybe send JVR and a second. Or JVR and Tyler Biggs. Or JVR and Corbinian Holzer. Or something like that. Even you though we they, don't need another defenseman. Do you think the Jets would want maybe a prospect that'd be... Is and there you know a what? forward? I, I oh. thought about it today, and okay. my dream trade would be JVR Matt Fratton for Evander Kane. Okay, here's another suggestion. Although he hasn't blossomed, but I would love to see. Here's Matt another Fratton one blossom. that would. I was thinking Matt Fratton. Uh, you're you're right on par the with other, me though. Other guy Carter Ashton. Yeah, Carter Ashton yeah. was the guy I was going to say mm-hmm. because the Jets might he want the Jets chance. got want a guy now. Yeah, and you know what? Give the guy a chance, and he made a mistake, and maybe whatever. 
and he would be in the second. I wouldn't second. even call that a mistake. I don't. I yeah. don't consider using a a asthma puffer. to live. Yeah, I get how it's against the, the rules, but it's real. That's real crap. Yeah, we've talked about that before, but yeah. that's. I understand. Yeah, he's serving it. I get it, but that's some real but crap. Once again, hypothetical, and I could see it being a trade that benefits both teams in a sense that JVR is a player that's only pro- going to progress, and he's a going to be a second line winger. And maybe that means you have to upgrade and find a first-line winger to replace Kane. But I think JVR could thrive here in the sense that he would stand in front of the net. He'd be a... Let's be honest. Like I don't know if you've ever watched a Toronto game, but he's the guy that stands in front of the net. Who's for that? Toronto. JV JVR. Says, yeah. Um, and I think that he would help You know, whatever line you put him on. And I think he would be able to buy into the system that Maurice is giving out there. I, I really think he would. And... I think he could just thrive here as a player just because maybe a little bit less pressure and, you know, he'd be in a system where it's not, here you go, you're the only line that's scoring right now, and you go, kind of thing. Because that's what the Kessel JVR Bozak line is. It's, that's They're not the expected line. to play defense. No. See, that's and the thing. It's here with a coach like Paul Maurice, you need to know how to play defense. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even, like, back to his, um, I'm trying to remember of all the teams he's coached, but Carolina? Yeah, that coached I Carolina, think. Toronto, and Winnipeg now. Carolina, Toronto, and Winnipeg. How did he do in Toronto? Horrible? See, his teams weren't terrible. Okay. They were all ninth, 10th place teams. They were terribly d- goaltended teams. That was the years where he had Andrew Braycroft and Vesatoska. And oh, both man. goaltending were just... It was I remember awful. those dark days. Like, they just didn't Toronto have Toronto has really, like... I know they still complain about goaltenders, but... They who was it? it was Toscala and Raycroft. Toscala and now it's Bernie and Reimer. Yeah. Those are notable names. Yeah. Those are good guys. Yeah, except good that... That's good 1A, 1B. Like, well, when you What's have, wrong with that? Well, but every time that Reimer fucks up, they like to, you know... Do they attack, attack Jonathan yourself. Bernie's wife? I don't if, think so. Or a significant... I don't, I don't think she has anything to attack. So, I don't know. Maybe. Whatever. But it's still, it's just disgusting and I don't like it. But it is what it is. But, yeah, Toronto has definitely made an upgrade. And, yes, we're talking about Toronto on a Winnipeg Jets-centric podcast. But I honestly think that that trade would benefit both sides. And even even if it's not, like, Carter Ashen would be a great addition to our fourth line. Peluso, Slater, Ashen. The other guy that I could think, not anymore this year just because of how well he's playing. Brandon Cozen. Braden Cozen. Well, Cozen's one of them, but I don't think he would... Fit the mold good, of Winnipeg? Fit the mold of Winnipeg, but I was thinking Peter Holland. But Peter Holland. Oh. The problem with that now he, becomes is he's progressing to what I thought he would become when he went to Toronto, which was a solid role player, mm-hmm. and you could put him on our third line or on our fourth line and he would thrive. And honestly, like I had dreams of having an actual competent fourth line, which we don't have. On Toronto? Uh, no, on Winnipeg. Oh, yeah, it's terrible. just it's, and I don't uh, and you know what? Let's get right into it. Galliardi got put on waivers. Hmm? Makes no flipping sense. None. At zero. Zero they sense. Have, okay, I saw have, that this that was this morning or no, yesterday. Well, okay, they placed him on waivers yesterday. He cleared them today. Unbelievable. It, the thing that bothers me the most here is that they keep playing Thorburn. They the never gave no Galliardi a chance. No. Every time, like he could have been a third line player. He should have been on the third line. He, he has the skills and the speed and everything to play on the third line. Yeah. He could do it. I, I don't know why they're short, and it might be the fact I don't know why. I don't. I still. I'm still so confused on why Thorburn is the player he is. He must do something behind the scenes that none of us know about. Well, as Dan will re- would refer chime in at this point, be like, "Or oh, he's heart and soul guy. Every team needs it." What do you mean? Every team needs it. Even way back, call back to the Pat Quinn thing and World Juniors. Um, teams like collection. World Juniors, even if they didn't have a, a leader, a go-to guy, the Giroux Marchand team, their their motto, every team has a motto, their motto that year was chip on our shoulders, because at one point, every one of those guys were cut from a team, even though they should have been on that team. It's like, you don't need... Well, do you want to hear you need what team ident- that was? You know, yeah, Cubbit, go ahead. Kyle Turris, John Tavares, Brandon Sutter, Stephen Stamkos, Wayne Simmons, Sean Mathias, Brad Marchand, Stefan Ligier, Riley Holofabel, Matt House, Chuck Claude Giroux, Colton Gillies... Zach Boychuk, yes, Matt Hollistrick is still that young. And yes, he should be playing on our fourth line regularly. Cause I, and anything... Uh, P.K. Subban, Luke Shen, Logan Payette, Thomas Hickey, Josh Godfrey, Drew Doughty, Carl Osner. Yes. With wow. goaltenders, Jonathan Bernier, Steve Mason. Um, Matt Hollistrick... Jonathan Bernier, Steve Mason. Wow. I can repeat that. Jonathan Bernier, Steve Mason. Both relevant wonder, to both of us. Steve and Mason and Netflix. why we won so many goals is because our teams were that stacked. 
Yeah. Well, even, well maybe in a couple of years okay. we'll look at Zach Fucali, but really Yeah, if you listen to if you listen to the team you just named, you wouldn't pick Matt Halishek to score the overtime gold medal winner. And yeah. he did. Yeah. Because just he was on the ice. Up. He was guys on the ice. Stepping up. And yeah. that's been the issue with our world junior teams, is we haven't mm-hmm. had those guys step like go, dating back to last year, as I go back here. Yeah, of course. Dating back to last year. We didn't really have a whoa 2013. Weren't we in 14 last year? No, they don't have last year's. Okay, let's go the year before with really no number one goalie. We had Bingington, Patterson, and Subban. All weren't very good for us. Then we had Hamilton, Harrington, Murphy, Reinhardt, Riley, Wather- Weatherspoon. Four of those. Four of those are NHL defensemen. Yeah. None of them really played fantastic tournaments. None they have to st- buy into. Up. They need a system now. And, and they, that- none of them. You're right. None of them bought into it. And then if you just... And this was the year that we had the lockout. This was the next lockout year. Yeah. Anthony Camara, Phil oh. Denault, Jonathan Drouet, Jonathan Hubidor, Charles Houdon, Boone Jenner, Nathan McKinnon, Mark McNeil, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Ty Ratty, Brett Ritchie, Mark Shifley, Ryan Strom. How many of those guys are in the NHL now? A bunch of them. Two thirds. That is a good team. The problem is, is they're not... You didn't have any unsung heroes. You didn't have a guy that stepped up in the big moments. You yeah. just didn't have it. And, and there's lack of leadership on this team. As of course, well. and now lack of leadership, just and bring it back to Winnipeg. Just because you said Halishuk, and then we went, and I went off there. Yeah, was with Galliardi, with Thorburn, and all these guys. Uh, what I was saying was Thorburn. Yeah, he's a he's a leader in the room. Build an identity through your team. Like it seems as though the Winnipeg Jets still lack an identity. I oh, think yeah. realistically, if they had an identity. Thorburn wouldn't be on the team anymore. Yeah. I know we make this joke and everyone does, but seriously, in my mind, Thorburn, like in the Wings game last week, he played two minutes and 21 seconds. He had a right? shot on net. He didn't do anything. And he's getting paid $1.2 million. Let me repeat that. $1.2 million. Yes, he's a professional athlete, but he's getting $1.2 million to sit every like three games. And when he does play, he's playing like under five minutes a game. Doctors get paid way, 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 way less than that. Like, a lot of them get paid more. But way less on average. What did Pig play tonight? How many minutes did Chris Sorbonne get? I couldn't tell T- you. Take a what? guess. Take a guess. Take a guess. 340. 506. Ooh. Peluso. How many did he get tonight? Two. Nope. 221. Wow. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Jim Slater had 10 minutes because he actually plays on uh, the penalty kill. But okay. he also had to come in for Adam Lowry. Because Adam Larry had a five in a game for hitting Patrick. I Blatt. saw that hit. Ooh, that was vicious, and he Ooh. drew blood. And what the worst part was, Patrick Coletto was already. I think his jaw was busted. Yeah, or he, his uh, bomb, he has an bomb? orbital bone. He has like thirteen screws and three plates around That's his orbital scary. bone after taking a slap shot. Yeah, and he drew blood. So and Halaschuk also played, and Halaschuk played fourteen minutes. Excellent, as he should be. And you know what? He needs to be more of a role player. And I know that some people don't think that Halaschuk deserves a spot on this team. But boy, does he prove it. Every time I've seen Matt Halaschek live, he sh- stands out as one of the better players. On yeah. the fourth line or third line, wherever he is, he is great Creates chances, he gets, he gets... Remember one of the first couple games that he played, all of us, like me, you, Dan, before the podcast started, we were like, wow, Halaschek's fast, he gets breakaway speed, oh. he creates offense. Yeah. That's what he does. That's what Galliardi did. Galliardi just wasn't that fast. Him and Galliardi should be the fourth line with Pelusa or someone else. It shouldn't be Thorburn and Slater. I really hope, I know this sounds terrible being a like a quasi-Jets fan, I really hope they don't sign Jim Slater and just get like the young guys, yeah. finally. like no. Stop I, signing I totally these guys agree. to bad contracts. This, or contracts, like, when we When we did the episode when, th- like, this is one of the co- coolest things about this podcast is we actually talked about it when Thorburn got signed and how upset we all were because we didn't think it was a fair signing to Anthony Peluso. Never mind a fair signing to the team. Yes. Because it definitely has handcuffed this team all year. Whether it's Maurice playing Thorburn mm-hmm. or whether it's the management saying, you're, you're playing Thorburn tonight. De- depending on who's saying it, it needs to be... when, And I'm not saying I'm a smarter person than Paul Morris. I will never make it to a head coaching job in the NHL. And even if I do, which is definitely something that I would love, and I feel that it would be just a grand gesture, I would notice things like your fourth line not having any points. And the one guy, the two guys that have played every game on your fourth line, no points. The only guy now on the team without a point, who would that be? Chris Torber? Yes. No way. Yeah. No yeah. way. Mm-hmm. Real? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And he's played almost every game. He's played all but one. All but one game. Yep. Only player on the team without a point. Only player. Now, and another thing is... Oh, oh let, let me go through... Sorry. 
I, I miss I misspoke. Galliardi doesn't have one in seventeen games, and Peluso doesn't have one in four games. I would. But like... Thorburn has zero in twenty three. Halschuk has one in thirteen. Klitsum has one in fifteen. Slater has one in twenty four. Party has two in twelve. Lowry has three in twenty four. Let's be honest, this team doesn't score a lot, but still, no points in 23 games. You're telling me that he deserves a spot on this team over Galliardi or over Peluso, for that matter? And see, the, another thing that Ridiculous. I'm thinking is, look at, okay, as we're finding out right now, because the Jets, although they did, okay, what happened this week? They won tonight 2-1 over the Sabres. Against the Blue Jackets, they won. They better have won against the Blue Jackets. <laughs> Although it sounded like they had a little bit of a run for their money at, at moments. And then they lost. So they went 2-1 and one this past week, since the last podcast at least. Uh, St. Louis, they lost. Yeah. And they beat, yeah, they've won two straight now. Okay. And Hutch played last night and played very well. Oh, excellent. Well, what, As I'll, he continues to come in and play and really do well. About time. I, not even about time. Just I'm We've glad they're playing. We've always had good backups and we just yeah. never play them. And that's Getting another thing. Montoya last year. Well, even, okay. And, and like I said last podcast, why was Pavlik playing back-to-back nights? That doesn't make sense it in less make than sense. 16 hours. I yeah. didn't even realize that until yeah. you pointed it out. Like, it just it, it boggles my mind some of the coaching decisions. And I don't know if it's management. And I, and I know Paul Maurice is smarter than that. And I don't, I still don't understand this Chris Sorbin thing. Sure, Chris Sorbin has 31 penalty minutes. Is he in, is he, is he on this team to create fights? Sure. But when, well, Adam Lowry's tonight was just what happened. But Bufflin has more point, pins than him. Wheeler has more pins than him. Than who? Then uh, then Thorburn. And P- Thorburn's purpose on this team is to fight people. Are you kidding me? Essentially. Essentially. Yeah. And you know what? The league is trending away from that. You need four solid lines to compete every And that's night. what I'm getting at, is that the Jets, when they went on their big win streak and whatnot, they were, genera- they were, they were getting wins, but it wasn't sustainable because they were only realistically ra- rolling right. like two and a half lines. Well, if you look at it, their average time on ice with their third line with Thorburn was 608, Halschuk 627, Slater 809. Everybody needs to be at that 8 to 9 mark on their fourth line. If you think about it this way, think about it this way. Mm-hmm. You have four lines. Yes. Each line plays 10 minutes. That's 40 minutes in a game. Okay. Then you play your first line for an extra 8. You're at 48. You play your third line for an extra 6. So you're at 54. You play your third line for an extra... 3? Th- or 4, we'll okay, say. I'll say. You're four. at 58. And then plus p- p- uh, minutes with like penalties and stuff like that. So it averages out to like 18, 16, 14, 10. That's, That's what you okay. need. That's, That's what okay. I think you need to be sustainable in this league. And they don't they're not even coming close to that. No, and that was the issue with the Leafs last year. It's just it's one of those things where you need to play four lines to be successful. It is just it's the way the NHL has become now. That's just that we're, we're in that age. And until the Jets realize it, they'll always be a threshold team. And every fan realizes it that Thorburn is not doing much. And I feel bad for Thorburn because he's getting a lot of hate. He's the being truth, a whipping boy now. The truth of the matter is, is that he's not he should not be a part of this team's mold anymore. They need They need to get away from the mold and go to the fast run and gun type style. They need to, they need to get away from Atlanta. The Atlanta Ambassadors. As we like to call, I like to call. Like I have no issue if they were to trade a lad away. I, uh, I'd have a little bit of problem if they trade little, but really, realistically, maybe not. We've okay. But like Slater and Thorburn have been there since the beginning. Pass, maybe Toby. Well, let's since, but they've been playing a lot longer as well. Yes, I'm yes. And yes. maybe they've not done anything in their careers. Maybe it's time to let them go. And I know Slater's a great leader, and he's an older guy. And Good guy off the a, ice and yeah. all that. Mm-hmm. Fine, give him a job in the coaching department. Give him a job with player personnel. Yeah. Same with Thorburn. If you need him to hold Evander Kane's hand, let him do that as a player coach because he's not doing the team any good. And I feel bad for Thorburn because I'm sure he's a great person. I'm sure he is. I'm sure I could say But his job him. is to play hockey. Yeah. And, and he doesn't not. do it very well. No, exactly. So you, you're, you're not attacking him as a person. No, I'm not. You're attacking him for what... He entail like what he is, what he's working for, what what he represents, and what he represents is not is not what uh, okay. what's paid for. Oh, to put ahead. this to put this in retrospect, the best team in the NHL, well, not the best team, but the team that won Arguably. the Stanley Cup last mm-hmm. year, the LA Kings. Guess who their lowest time on ice guy was last night against the Minnesota or tonight against the Minnesota um, Wild? Jordan Nolan. It's a Kyle ooh, Clifford. Ooh, very close. Kyle Clifford, eleven thirty four. Second place, Tyler Toffoli. Yes, the same Tyler Toffoli had seven goals in the first nine games with 11.36. Your lowest guy is playing 11 minutes. Argument made. 
You need your team to play a 10 You need to roll the four lines. lines. Four lines, 10 to, minutes a And we're seeing it now. The slide's already beginning. It yeah, is sure. They're, somewhat is. The slide isn't beginning. Okay, if you didn't beat the Blue Jackets and the Sabres, then I'd, I'd have some serious questions. The Blues, you held in there, but you still, like, even during the Blues game, Wheeler had a hit on, I wrote Butler. I don't know if this is right. But it just reminded me of the Curtis Glencross hit when they played the Flames. We didn't touch on it because I didn't want to start a fire okay. friends with Dan. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not, this is an attack on Dan. But we're being like, I'm being, uh, uh, what's it called? He, Wheeler has made very reckless plays, and that was one of them. And just during, during the third period against the Blues, they lost 4-2. to two. Kane had a double minor in those seven minutes left in the game, which basically crippled them because they were already down 3-2. to two. Yeah. So you don't give up a goal. Like, you don't take a double minor and it drew. Like, it was a high stick. Um, dur- on that penalty kill, Shifes, it was Shifes, Wheeler, Bogo, and Toby. Shifes stole the puck, went up the ice, dropped it to Bogo. Bogo just wound up and clapped it. They zoomed out. Bogo missed the net, by the way. Blake Wheeler was wide open. Wide open. I'm talking like, oh, at least 85% chance that puck would be in the back of it. Fine twine. And if it didn't, it was going, it was a face-off. That's too bad. Unbelievable. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, this past Saturday was the third year anniversary of Money Phone with the Vander Kane. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Did not know that. But yeah. It, it's just, yeah. You got it. And I'm not like I'm not saying that we're experts or that we we're not even in the NHL media. No, People just don't have, know who we are in the NHL. No, we just have opinions that maybe no one listens to. Maybe some people listen to. It's just from we what we've noticed in the past with this is year four of the Jets since anywhere finished but drafting between seventh and eleventh, fueled by mediocrity. Like nothing much has changed. And you're right, no. threshold team. What? You have to break away from the mold, and you now is when you have to do it. You have to yeah. do it. Make trade if you have to trade. Trade Lad now. Trade Buff now. While there's still contracts, like while there's still some contract left, and you might get some value. I don't know what, but some. Pick, pick, keep a few guys. Like obviously, you've shown commitment to Evander Kane. You've shown commitment to Bogo. You're, you've shown commitment to Blake Wheeler. To Blake Brian Wheeler, Little. Brian Little. There you go. You've you've picked the guys. Obviously, the guys. I know you signed those guys like Lad Buff. Lad Buff, who else is there? Yeah, I guess... Pavlik. And Pavlik. You've, you've shown those guys. But obviously, it doesn't seem like... Uh, you. I just I would say, if you're going to make a trade and stuff, do it now. I, I yeah. don't know. But you know what? If you're going to suck, suck. If you're not going to suck, go for it then. Go do it. Figure like, something stop out. Stop doing nothing. Yeah. It's... It's the... Well, we can discuss it if you want to. It's the Edmonton other thing. We just... They're not doing anything. Yeah. And they're sucking. And, yeah. and they're even sucking they're, yeah. with a decent team. Like, I, hell, I would take... Would you take hell? Would you take Everly? I would, would take, take any Hopkins? one of the would guys they have drafted yeah, yeah. in the last past six years. Yeah. Back, to, dating so, back to six or... Even yeah, six Elvis? years. Even no Jordan El- Everly? Yeah. Second Jordan, rounder. Yeah, Jordan Everly. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 not the players at this point. It's it's the whole system, system. top to bottom. You got to change it. You got yeah. there needs to be change. In Edmonton, but it's the same with Winnipeg. It's the fact that there were just I don't know if it, they're afraid of losing. Just change, change something. Mm. You know, if something's not working, you change it. It's like with a business. If something's not working inside the business, you change it. Yeah, you, you don't just, just sit there and be like, oh, maybe it'll go away. It'll fix itself. That's oh, not- progression. No, change it. <laughs> This is why people didn't think we were going to do well this year is because we didn't change anything. And sure, right now we're playing good hockey. And sure, right now we're one of the best Canadian teams in advanced stats. Of course, we're four or whatever it is. Yeah, so that's that. fine. That's cool. That's sweet. But that doesn't mean that much. That doesn't necessarily correlate to wins. And nor does that correlate potentially to being a playoff team, which this team needs to be. And right now we're not doing anything to become a playoff team. Sure, we can be patient and live by a nine-year rule. Great. I want to wait nine years before I watch my team make the playoffs. Never mind, do that. Maybe make an NHL trade at some point. Maybe, you know what? If a guy's not scoring in 20 games, take him out of the lineup. They did it to James Wright last year, too. They wouldn't take him out, and he scored one goal all year last year. One? One. Didn't he have only five points all year? Yeah. In like 70 games yeah. and 60 games? It's just, it's like they're afraid of doing something that's going to make the players mad. They want to keep players happy because players don't want to play here. So what? Bite the bullet. Do you do you think? Okay, 
If you're, would you rather play on a team that's not going anywhere or a team that's trending upwards? Trending upwards every time. Yes. I'm and not like, retiring it. I'm not. I was about to even make a joke about Florida, but guess what? They're trending upwards. Yeah, exactly. They figured it out because they got a GM, Dale Talon, who's like, hey, um, yeah, we're not just going to be normal. Old, hey, you get to go to Florida, have a beach, go hang out and play some pond hockey because we're playing the Panthers. No, he, he's turning them into a like legitimate at, threat. If you look at their... Have you seen all their, their yeah, young guys coming up? Prospects? The smallest, the <laughs> smallest guy's Jonathan Huberto, and he's six one. Like out of, apart from Rocco Grimaldi, all their few big top draft picks are huge. Your Nick Beekstad is six five, like two thirty. Bar- Barkov, Barkov's a beast. He's, he's like, like six, six four. four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ekblad six four. Yeah, those wonder, are behemoths. They're gonna get this year. What's that? Could you imagine them with getting like an Eichel, just like a skill guy? No. No, I can't even see him getting Eichel because they're talented now. Yeah. They're good. They and they've, win got games. A, they've got a number one goalie. And back to the, the Edmonton argument, I, a friend of mine is an Edmonton fan, and he, not, not the one you're thinking of, but another one. Um, and he was saying, like, oh, yeah, if we, get, if we get Connor McDavid, like if the Edmonton Royals get Connor McDavid, oh, it's perfect. And I just asked him, well, what, what's wrong with the five or four other straight one pick or three other yeah. straight one pick overalls? Like, why... What what's wrong with it? Like you're getting the players, you have the talent now. What's why isn't it correlating? Because they don't have the management. They don't have the system. They have to. You have to find an identity, and that's what these even the like the Jets. Hawks and the Penguins and oh. all these good teams are finding identities. And even and they like have them. and even and they now, have like them. just regarding like the Flyers and Leafs, you're finding they're finding they're they're about to enter their identity. Like you're seeing with the Leafs, it's yeah. hey. They'll, sure, they might get blown out. Everyone gets blown out from time to time. They bounce back, and you know what? They're very capable of scoring, averaging four goals a game. Very capable. Two, yeah, two, on, two from Phil Kessel alone, but like every second night if you want to. And then you look at the Flyers. Sure, they're not very good defensively, but they can definitely put up four to six goals a night, especially with that top line right now would be Shen, Giroud, Vorchek. But they're always, they show no quit. They're a very, even their fourth line, I'd love to, I think the average is probably around like six to nine minutes for the fourth line. But that fourth line, they know their role. Get in the face of everyone, hit everything that moves, and they're doing it. And right now, I guess it'd be Belmar, Ronaldo, and either Akison or Vandeveld. But that's just irrelevant. Their fourth line is getting, they're playing, and they know their role. It's not to try and create offense. It's to create turnovers and get face-offs yeah. for the number one line to come in and take that offensive zone face-off. That's their job. Yeah. That's their job, and they're doing it. And that's, that's the biggest thing that we're saying is both with Edmonton. And you know what? I'm going to make that comparison. Winnipeg is Edmonton right now, just with a better record. I even, I mean... Edmonton as, still yet to beat a team in their own conference. Wow. They have not beaten a team in the Western Conference yet. Really? They're, all their runs are Eastern. <gasps> when does Winnipeg play Edmonton? Next week, December 3rd. Oh, don't no. worry. Don't, I, I will put money on it that Winnipeg's going to lose that game. I will put money on it. You'll bet money that Winnipeg will lose? We'll lose to Edmonton. I'll t- Slurpee bet. I'll do it right now. I'll take, I'll take Winnipeg to win. Yeah, okay, but I'm, I'm totally on Edmonton. But just, make a I, it's just the trends yeah, that I've seen with of course. Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. But the other thing, and to your point, oh... It's Buffalo and Columbus. We needed to beat them. If you look at our... I think we're now 8-2-2 two two against the East this year. It's East. We dominate them now. We're, in, we're a West team. Because we've so been what? building for so the West. What? We play... Oh, if, then everyone says, Oh, if we're still in the East, we make playoffs. Yeah. So what? You're not. You're not. So you can't use that that's argument. Like, that's like saying, Oh, man, if we had drafted Alex Petrolangelo instead of this guy, we would be that much better. That's me. The one, the next, the one after rule. Like, let's just do, the only one after rule I don't like is like, no, I'm not, I don't like, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it at the time is the Evander Kane one. Is Evander Kane one after is Braden Chen. Yeah. But you name Bogo, Petro, Burmy. Oh, that one hurts. Mikhail Granlund. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because I have a weird man. Yeah. I don't think he's that much better than, oh, I, well, I, Burmy's I, not in the NHL. So of course not. I, I don't. There's many players better than Mikhail Ground. I just like him. But yeah. back to the argument. Yeah, that's fully. That is definitely on par with Winnipeg. Is Edmonton in terms of they they, don't do they need to change it? The Atlanta Ambassadors, that's what I call them. The, like the the group of guys who came over. They do, they're too good of friends. They become too good work associates and friends to call each other out at work yeah, because then it just, creates a, a a mend in their friendship. And that's. That's the thing something. that happens with people at work. Go ahead. I, I don't want to hate on Paul Maurice. I think he's a tremendous coach. If Pat Quinn was the coach of this team, never mind that. If he was coach slash GM, this team would be a lot different, and they would probably be a playoff team. See, that's, an, that's a hypothetical. That's a I'm hypothetical. not disagreeing with it but whatsoever. 
if you think about it, like, one of the biggest problems in the Clone Noel era was they would take nights off. Never would happen with Paquin. Because he will, he will number find two, you accountable. Number two, he put people in the right roles to succeed every night. And he knew what worked. And he would, he would not be playing Thorburn. You know what he would do? He would go, if, let's say, okay, let's just say, let's say Shovel Day Oliver Chipman are telling Maurice you have to play Thorburn. He'd be like, no, I'm not playing him. How about, how about this? I won't play him tonight. If we win, he stays out. If we lose, I'll put him back in. I'll listen to you guys. But if but if he if we play better as a team without a minute, eh, he stays yep. in. Why? I'm the coach. You're the GM. I know how the teams work. You don't. You build the team. I make it work. Yeah, that's and your job. That, that's your job. That's it, my it's job. It's almost one of those things where it's like you can't think of stepping on eggshells. Like you can't tiptoe around everything. You have to be decisive and you have to make intelligent moves and just work on making the team better. I have no issue if they tore the team apart year one and said, no, we don't want Lad, no, we don't want, you know, Buff. We want to just start a build and just find our, we want to build an identity from there. Like, the problem with Edmonton right now is they have no D, their goaltenders are getting burned every night because they have no D, and no one's standing up for each other, for one another. Last night, Ryan Garbutt's hit on Taylor Hall. Nugent Hopkins had to stand up for Hall. Nugent, Nugent Hopkins. This is one of the smallest guys on the team. The, the great thing about this, I don't know if you saw this, but Chicago just absolutely demolished Edmonton on Saturday night. It was 7-2. It was 6-1 or something? 7-1 <gasps> or something? Yeah, but wasn't it 6 nothing or 5 nothing after nothing. the second? 6 nothing after the second. Wow. Game. And then Keith Ollie creamed uh, one of the Hawks players. In return, I believe, I'm, fuck, I know, Roosevelt, I'm going to say. Yeah, Michael, Michael Roosevelt. Heat hit Leandro Seidel. That is your new number one draft, or new fir- up and coming first round kid, draft rookie. Pick. Your second round or your second line center gets hit from mine, drilled, laying on the ice. Does anyone come to his defense? No, no one. No, everyone just stood there. Everyone stood there. No one. No one was stepping in his face. There is no unity on that team. That's one of the things the Jets have is they do have unity, and the players are believing in each other maybe a little bit more. But there's none of that there. It's time to blow that thing up and say, okay, we're just going to get rid of these assets. We're going to get rid of, you know, keep two guys. Figure out which two guys. It's definitely not Neil Yakupov. He doesn't like, work with the Dallas Eakins. He's, Neil Yakupov is the Evander we're, Kane, where no, he just doesn't fit in the system. Yeah. He doesn't work. You know, and it'd be great. It'd be great. Like, I still think Neil Yakupov's a tremendous hockey player. He, if he goes to Montreal, plays on the Gallagher, Galchenyuk, Yakupov line. You tell me that line does not succeed. Gallagher get in the face of everyone. Galchenyuk to set up Yakupov. And Yakupov it's like junior can play two way forward, and he know he can get in your face. Yeah, he'll chase you down. He's great at defense this year. Just no one's noticing it. Yeah, actually, one of the things that I, I noticed to your Evander Kane point mm-hmm. is somebody tweeted, uh, and they're like, Evander Kane, he's the only guy on the team not buying what Murray's is selling. He's just doing his own thing still. He's just not buying into the system. Yeah, or oh, making a, a sweet, sweet... Sh- oh, what's that? Ooh. I'm trying to think of what it was called. What would you call it where he shoots and you can... Oh, you always know when Evander Kane takes a shot because you can hear it. Yeah. Because it hits best the sound, Best sounding shot in the NHL. Yep, that's it. He never hits the net. Yeah. But, like, his problem is, like, teams know how to play him. And if he went Force into- him to the outside, he'll <sighs> force the but shot. But the other problem, too, that I feel that we have is we don't have somebody to help guide him because nobody is at that skill level that if Kane's at. Or that he, he can went, reach. That he, if he went to Toronto, you would get his full potential. I'm not saying that to benefit me. I'm not saying that. But if there he are were guys to around Toronto who can help him. Philadelphia, if he played with Cole Giroux, 40-50 goal score. Probably. Giroux would find him and he wouldn't need to lead the rush and he wouldn't be taking those shots off the rush. It would be... He'd be top getting of the circle, up, baby. Top of the circle. Mm-hmm. That's where he'd be. Yeah, that's where those pucks will be. It's funny because I was talking uh, just to a person I ran into, and we we're talking about um, the Flyers because a person happened to be a Flyers fan, and they were saying that the Flyers lack like a left, like a left wing, left winger ever since Hartnell. So basically, just this year, yeah. because they need a guy to go into the corner slash just get open in those shots. Because Voracek's more of a playmaker, Giroux's more of a playmaker. They'll do give and goes and shoot if they have to, but they'd much rather pass. Evander Kane, if he came in, he'd muck and grind, just knowing. You could get him to hit and forecheck just knowing that he's going to get that puck back in 10 seconds oh, and yeah. have a wide open shot. And Evander Kane has one hell of a shot. I'm not denying him that no. at all. No, not at all. So. And you can, he just, he has it, but it's just, maybe, maybe we're just too gung-ho on trades. 
Because, honestly, let's be honest here, whoever's listening to this, if you have an NHL game and you start a franchise, what's the first thing you do? You trade, you trade players. for guys you like and get yeah. rid of the guys you don't like. Exactly. Wave them. Exactly. Of course. And it's just, maybe we have a gung-ho mentality, but maybe at the same time, we understand that players don't work in certain roles. Yeah, and, and players don't work geniuses. in certain systems. Yeah. Like, as we said multiple times when once Maurice came over, Evander Kane had, tw- he was in, um, there was in 21 games that he played with uh, Maurice, he only had two goals. Yeah. Produced. Yeah. Total. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Well, the other thing that I want to just mention and put out there is uh, Jack Johnson. Mm-hmm. He wasn't working in the Brent Sutter, or is it Daryl Sutter, Sutter system. So instead, what they did was they got rid of him, they bring Jeff Carter in, and they become a team. They weren't afraid to make a big move. Because when you think about it, Jack Johnson, it's Jack freaking Johnson. He was... Double J from the back end. Yeah. Double J, double D. Okay, that was the I'm thing. S- I'm sorry. Your number one defenseman, Drew Howie. Your second defenseman, Jack Johnson. That's a pretty good one, too. They just, bam, they pulled it. They and did they, it. And they weren't afraid to do it. Mm-hmm. Another great example. The Kessel trade. Hey, we're going to be good now to give up this because we think he's a great player and we're going to capitalize on something here. Yes. And they weren't afraid to make that deal. It would never happen here because we're just too scared to do it. We're too and, scared. We're, and that trade we're, the, that, we're, we're honestly the definition of Winnipeg. Conservative, scared, and worried about... The future. Things not working out. We're, we're scared to take that risk. We're not risk takers, and we need to be. We honestly need to be. Well, and to that trade successful. that you suggested... I, I could just think of, like, the standard... Or, like, Steve Dangle's hat guy, or, like, just a standard fan, like, doesn't listen. Like, if you suggested trading... Evander Kane and who who is the guy we're gonna throw in? Evander Kane in the third for JVR and even we'll say Peter Holland. No, no. Why? Evander Kane. Nope. Evander Kane's a top line player. JVR, he can't score 40 goals a year. And it's like, yeah, but JVR by being on your team, everyone on your top line could probably definitely hit 60 because he makes not that he's not a Vander Kane level. He's not he's not a sniper. Let's get that right. He's but he's a two-way playmaking guy who can move up and down your lineup, and he can play PK, he can play power play, he can play and he stands in front of the net, and he's it's like, oh, well, Vander Kane stands in front of the net, but not like... To the degree that... How the, many tipping goals does Vander Kane get a year versus JVR? JVR, I bet close. you half, half of JVR's goals are tipping. I'm not saying he's not talented, okay. but a big chunk you know of where, You know where Vander Kane's goals are scored? Pretty much right by the dot. About right a by, meter by meter block. Yeah. Right, right at, or right as you the walk the into the blue line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's where most of his goals are scored. JVR's, I would say it's 80% of his goals, five feet away from the net. Five feet. Yeah, because he's there. He's, he's waiting. Just there. That's just where he is. And th- that's something that we just don't have enough of. Could you imagine him, Shafley, and Lowry on the same line? That'd be very interesting. That'd be a great combo. You got a little bit of everything. You got playmaking with Shifley. You have a bit of hitting. Speed, JVR. Oh, and hitting with Lowry. And, and Shifley's just coming around to hitting too. But yeah. Lowry is great. Apart from the Coletta. That was weird. That, that one, was, that was out of the blue. I'll, I'll tweet the link to that one for sure. Um, I'll just make it. But if you think here. about that, like that's that could be a decent second line. And then you still have the little lad Wheeler. And then you still have Frolik buff per boat. That, those are your lines. Yeah. And then even and like, if you make a trade with Lad, like I, I, I know people are like, oh, you don't, can't turn around a team in a year or in a couple of trades. I know, but you can most certainly get the wheel rolling and get the ball rolling into what's going on. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, any last words on the Jets before we just very quickly open the mailbag? Oh, okay. Uh, I think despite the record, this team needs something done and done quickly. Hopefully. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Greg, I have a question for you. Yeesh. There's only one current NHL player who has played, or he was a teammate of Wayne Gretzky. Who is that player? He's been Sorry. to the Stanley Cup final. Sorry, repeat that question? Okay. The only current NHL player to have been a teammate of Wayne Gretzky. Is this NHL teammate or just teammate overall? NHL teammate. NHL, NHL teammate. And he's so a current NHL player. So he'd have to be a New York Ranger... Or he, Correct. he is a current New York Ranger. No, 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 he was a Ranger. He was a Ranger. So he would have been a Ranger in... And he's been to a cup final in the last... Uh, it was 98-99 was the season. Well, did he win? Did he win the Stanley Cup? No, but he's been to the final in the last 
three years, four years. Within the last four was years. Michael Roosevelt? No, it okay. was not. Uh, can I have more guesses? You can. You may. Okay. Um, he had. He was out for a while because he had a major injury. Matthias Oland? No. Did you know he was still in the NHL? No, I didn't. Yeah. I, I was Apparently about to be he's like, still he's still on Tampa playing. Bay. Wow, really? Apparently. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'll give you... He had a major... Okay, it was, it was in a facial region, major surgery. Well, like, the only one I can think of is La Perriere, but no. He's gone. Kate, would you... It, the team he went to the final was on a Canadian team. Was Canadian he wears team? my favorite number normally. Jordan Tutu? No, no, my oh. favorite number. Normally. Mm-hmm. Oh, 27. Mm-hmm. Major surgery. Brian Burrard is the only other guy I could think of that. Manny I Malhotra. Malhotra? Rookie really? year was 98-99. He was Gretzky. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. I saw that one. I was like, that is a fun that's, fact. That's a very interesting oh, fact. That's what I was going to say. Oh, just teams finding identities. We'll go back to that. I just Actually, say, can we mention yeah. something before? Of course. Uh, we're just about to talk AHL, I believe, as I see Cam's Oh, they, I was going to go to this one, but you go first. Um, Connor Halbuck of the... St. John's Ice Caps. St. John's Ice Caps. Not craps, caps. Caps. Okay. Player of the week for the AHL. Went 4 0. What? Posting a, I'm going to butcher this, 975 save percentage with a point eight three goals against average, I believe. Wow. With two shutouts. Mama, good yeah. job, Connor. Yeah, exactly. Good job, Connor. Yeah, especially That's the way awesome. that Budai failed. Well, especially the way that our goal, our no goaltending, goaltending's still, still been really good. Yeah, uh, Pavlik's in a nine nineteen, and Hutch is still well, in a nine forty seven. Hopefully, it stays consistent. And especially Hutch has played the six games with a nine forty seven. Wow, that keeping it up. Barring that, with that LA debacle with a seven, I think he was seven sixty three in that LA game when he let three goals. Apart in. from that, he'd be far and away. Yeah. And yeah, just on the AHL, the Utica Whale, oh, <laughs> Utica, no, Utica and Syracuse, they and set attendance else. record of. 30,715 people for largest indoor crowd at a U.S. pro hockey game ever last Sunday, I believe, or last Saturday, so that's pretty cool. What I was going to say was Tyler Sagan, that's he right. had two goals this week. Yeah. Both off a breakout off just amazing line changes or bad line changes. One was a breakout pass from his own goalie, Kari Lennon. Oh, I saw that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then the second one was from John Klingberg, which yeah. was... It's still the same thing. It was the same, same goal. Same position. Well, same breakout passes. Yeah. Far left side, caught it, in goal. Fast rush team. That's they have found their identity and they're building with it. I like they that. They continue I love to that. win. They continue to win. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Devin Setaguchi from the Flames got waved. I had a picture of the average age of NHL blue lines. It's in French, but I will tweet it. It's actually, oh, it's on my phone. But I will tweet, I will tweet it because... Uh, Winnipeg's like halfway up the... Who do you think is the oldest blue line? It's got to be New Jersey. No. I think they're up there, but the, uh, it's Montreal. 32.7. Oh, but, Markov, yeah. But, or it was like 31.8, but without Beaulieu, it's 32.7. Oh, wow, that's Just crazy. depending. Um, yeah, Setaguchi got waved out. Uh, injuries. Benoit Pouliot. Ooh, Vancouver. Not that he's... Hey, he's doing pretty good. He was a, he would have been the protector for Dreisaitl. Broken foot. He's out four to six months. Dan Hamus is out indefinitely. It could be months. He's off for a second opinion. And it was it was uh, one of his foot... Booties. One of his feet are in a boot. Um, oh, and quick milestones. Uh, the other person you did not mention in the injuries list is Roman Polak of the Toronto Maple Leafs out four months. Or oh, four weeks. Oh, really? Four weeks oh, with a lower that. body injury. Dang it. From uh, what happened there? Didn't he slip in the corner? Yeah, something weird you happened. Uh, we totally forgot to mention something before we get into milestones. Yeah, you go. The Well, one of the statistically best goalies of all time, Martin Broder, <gasps> getting his tryout with the St. Louis Blues. What? Brian Elliott, not in the, mentioned in the injuries, got injured yesterday with a lower body injury. Really? And St. Louis for someone decided here to phone up Marty, the good old Marty Brewer. No, so they're, they're so going to they're gonna let him train with the team. They're going to let him train with the team for a little bit and see where it goes from there. Oh, mama. So he could potentially be there. But here's what That'd I'm thinking. That'd be a great team to be in front of. Here's Marty. what I'm thinking. Behind. Who's now the starting goalie in St. Louis with Elliott down? Jake Allen. How old is Jake Allen? Pretty young. 25, 24. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to get taught by Martin Broder? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And that is a th- Think about the teams that Marty was on when they won. 
how good defensively they were. The Blues mm-hmm. are so defensive, and now they have that, okay. that piece they needed in okay. Tarasenko. Question. Mm-hmm. What do the Blues? What were Blues good at last year? Defense and defensive defenseman scoring. Yeah. How many points does Joe Bowmeister have this year? J Bow. Yeah. Probably not a lot. How many? Uh, I'm gonna get sixteen. Two. Two. Two points. Okay. Where are you getting that? That they are so good and so good defensively. No one really cares that J Bow is getting paid the amount that he's getting paid to score two points. That's how good this defensive team is. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point I'm making, is that oh. the fact is that no one's talking about the fact that J-Bo has no points. Or the fact that Zach Redmond on the Colorado Avalanche has three goals this season, and the Winnipeg Jets' defense combined has, I believe, six. Uh, the fact that we might have four guys with over three points, or three goals. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. The only guys I think that have more than three goals are Frolik, Little, Shice. Lad, and Wheeler. I think Scheiss is three. Find you go get on that. I think uh, I think I'll have our team. Well, you're talking. Oh, the Blues. Oh, Mama. Yeah. Think doing, about that. Oh, think about so that for scary a second. Scary to think about. I don't yeah. want to think about that. That's something. I but like, Broder doesn't have to play. He just has to. You know, like I'm just gonna train this Jake Allen guy to be a good player. There you go. That's all he has to do. Doesn't yeah. Have, doesn't have to do play much. Play the odd game here or there once a week if he does even play. It's insane. While you're figuring out right, goals, players for the Jets with more here. than three goals. No, you don't want to do that? That's cool. Yep. What's that? Oh, yep. phone? Come on, phone. No, no, it. it's fucking app. Hey, Winnipeg Jets app. Work better. Be better. How about that? Just Work it. better. Be better. Together. Okay. Aggression. So players right now with more than... Uh, Three goals. Lad, Wheeler, Little, Froleek, Kane. That is yep. five. Yep. You want to name uh, name the goals by, by defensemen if you can. Okay, Enstrom, one. Okay. Bogo, zero. Truba, two. Stewart, one. Postma, one. Party, none. Klitson, none. That's it? That is it. That's five. Zach Redman has three. <laughs> yes, this team does not score. Oh, and did I mention he's a right-handed shot? Kudos, Winnipeg, on letting Zach Redmond strudel away. Yeah, I never understood that one. I did not understand. We just never gave him the chance, yeah. especially after what happened to him. Mm-hmm. Because he was good when he came in here and stepped in. He was good. And, like, it's he, just, apart, this team barring just, his injury. It's, it's very funny. This team never really allows the guys who come in, especially Patrice Cormier, who step in. They never play poorly here. Just never let them have that chance to be anything more. It's, it's like, these are our guys, and this is the only guys we can play. It's like a, such a set mindset. It's weird. Okay, go over the milestones. Oh, milestones quick. Andre Markov and Taylor Hall at 100 goals. I will give, uh, uh, how many games played has Taylor Hall played? I just pulled that up. Something like 300, probably. Very short. Uh, Daniel Sedin played 1,000 games. Oh, Mark andre Fleury hit 300 wins. Yes, I saw that. Uh, he's under 30. He's 301 today. If he what keeps up the pace in Vancouver, averages 301. There you go. Um, if he averages... Like, a pace of what he's been averaging with the Penguins of, like, what, like 30-ish wins a year or more. He could be in the top 10 wins of all time by the age of, I think, 32 or something crazy like yeah. that. And people don't respect him. Oh, um, he's only the... He's the 31st goalie to do so. Ever. 300 That's wins. pretty crazy. Did you see Gino's quote after the game? No. It was the greatest quote you could hear. It's like, Gino's like, I don't know how he... I, I'm not good at rushing, but he's like, I don't know how he hit 300 wins. I scored 10 goals on him at practice. Yeah, I like I don't. That. that went Asian to nothing. But he's like, yeah, I scored ten goals on him in practice. I don't know. I was letting this in. He's not that good. And then like you could just see Crosby and like Flurry giggling in the background. For almost hate the guy gets, he's still been a very consistent goalie for that team. Oh, and like incredibly, it, he he got rushed in at eighteen or nine eighteen no, nineteen. No. He was he was eighteen. No, he was twenty. Twenty? You sure? He got drafted no three. Went Flurry, Malkin, Crosby. Wow. And he played when he started playing when he was 20? No. Wow, ma. He's been there a With while. those yellow pads. Hey, brought him back for their ultis. <laughs> well, bright he yellow. Th- he's just under 30, right? Like, he's 29? Well, if he got drafted in 03, it would have been 18. So 18 plus... So he's 20, like 29. 29. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. He's got to be 29. Yeah. There you go. Uh, anything else to say? I had something else that I wanted to talk about. Yes. Go ahead. I just thought of it. Mm-hmm. The Milan Lucic got one-punched by Columbus Blue Jacket. 
I can't think of his name. I'm going to look it up right now. Oh, Dalton Prout. Dalton Prout. Yeah. Did you, I, did you see this? I did. Yeah, I this think... was right after our podcast on Friday. Yeah, it Happy was. Friday night. What, what, you're asking my thoughts on it? Yeah. What, okay, not the one punch. They set Camilo up for Lucic a fight. comments. I didn't hear the comments. Oh, he called the, the punch gutless. Why? They set up for a fight. And he punched him. Yeah. That's what happens His in a fight. His direct quote was gutless. Gutless. Because he got one punch and he doesn't want to man up to the fact he got one punch? I think so. He's like, I've been in over a thousand, a hundred fights and I've never taken a shot like that. He essentially well, said Well, because he was, he was going shot. in hot, tr- thinking he was hot shit because he was going to kick this guy's ass. Yeah, hey, if Milan Lucic one punch him and Dalton Pro called him gutless, Milan Lucic would be like, wait, who? Who? Yeah. Because he'd be a dick about it. Yeah, because that's what Milan Lucic is. And I, I think love that Montreal's in the brain of Boston now. It's oh, it's best. awesome. And that's actually funny, funny that you say that. Totally off topic. But the team that I'm coaching, we're a little bit smaller. We had to play against this team that's a little bigger, notoriously known as assholes. I said, guys, when was the last time that Montreal lost to Boston? I said, what do you mean? They're like, well, we're all kind of scared of them because they're bigger than us. The truth is, we just got to get under their skin. And once we do that, we've got them. Throw them off their game. Now, Don't play, let them play your game, not theirs. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. the problem became that we got scored on four, four goals in the first five minutes. But after that, it was a great game. And we got under <laughs> their skin. But, <laughs> but after that, <laughs> she didn't do it first. You're <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> wait, now? Wait, na- now. Yes, engage. But it was fun. I was like, man, you guys can do this. They get it back to 4-2. I was like, okay. they can. And they... They were drawing penalties. They were getting under their skin. And I'm like, that's how you got to play those teams. Is you gotta get under yeah, the skin. big boys, you got to take them out. And it's, yeah, Montreal's figured out Boston. Boston's the, the most beatable. They're the most beatable team in the NHL now, I think, of, like, the elite teams. Them and Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay's really fallen off lately. They're not getting... They're it's not also getting, due to the fact that they're missing their top defenseman in Victor Hedman. Yeah, but they're also not getting human-like or... Create uh, Vesna type goaltending from Ben Bishop this year. Yeah, he's and, been very average. And Jonathan Drew has been healthy scratch. So possibly World Juniors, although he didn't really do much when he was there because there was so much pressure. I mean, yeah, I feel like they need to build World Juniors. <laughs> I'm always going to talk about it until it happens. The World Junior team, they have to have sandpaper and a guy who can hit on every line. Yeah, I don't know. Do. I it sounds so stupid because you're like. Well, well, back to back to back, back, yeah, back to the original point though of like I was talking about European players and how it's been going to the Europeans. It's back in the day we used to build. Oh, we're gonna hit you and beat you up and put fear into you. Now it's can you ca- keep keep up to us? That's how the Europeans are building their teams. Like the Finns and Swedes and Russia, they're like, we don't need to hit. We just need to skate faster than you, so you can't hit us. You know, what's funny is I try to look up like what we we're talking about. Like look up the old World Junior rosters. So I typed in World Junior Rosters. On my most searched, like, stuff on here is Taylor Swift Shake It Off lyrics. Because, you know like, I, I have a running joke with my friends. I've, about wait, shake, shake it, it off. off. I was shake like, hey, are you having a bad day today? Just shake it off. Shake it off. I know what? I think that's how we're going to go out. Winnipeg, Edmonton. You shake it off. You got to tell me One day. You you one shake day. off that dust. Get that dust off. You know what's awesome? Out. Actually, before we mention that, mm-hmm. I watched some of the Buffalo-Winnipeg game tonight. Yeah. There's surprisingly a lot of fans still in Buffalo for a team that's in dead last. They have a good oh, fan base. Before we finish, McDavid watch 2015. Is McDavid back? No. Oh, don't you do that. <laughs> Week two of six right now. Okay. Um, he went to Toronto, saw a hand specialist. Yeah, there's hand specialists. There's a hand guy. They're definitely hand guys. Yeah. So they're a hand specialist. They took the cast off, put a new one on. Still on track to hit that five to six week arc. So... He'll be in the World Juniors, most likely. Excellent. So, which means the bottom five teams in the NHL currently, as we stand, let's go, not conference. Sorry for making this so long. And all not, the last week was 20 minutes. It was You're an right. hour and 21 minutes. Sorry, not so. I enjoyed it. You know what I the like crazy it. thing is? Is like we're like, hey, we should try to do it just an hour, and it never works. No, guess. ever, never. If we were trying plus, to do an hour, we'd have to shoot for 40 minutes. Plus, when it's me and you, it just it just goes on forever. Yeah, we have no well, hey, structure. That's fine. We had no topics in front of us. We just kind not of really. Started. I had like very brief topics. Not okay, much. so 26th, Philadelphia, Carolina, 27th. Columbus, 28th. I'm done. I'm done. Why? Buffalo is 29th now, guys. To Edmonton! Edmonton. No, <laughs> Edmonton. No. Still the worst. no! They are slated to be oh, number no. one overall. Oh, no! <laughs> oh! 
<laughs> well, hey, Connor McDavid's going to fix everything in Edmonton, right? It's it's Connor not the system. Connor it's the man. It's Connor not the Connor management. Connor it's the team. You know what they don't have? What's that? They don't have any Mimico players on their team. That's the problem. They don't have any Mimico. They don't have. Any. They don't. They, they don't have. They don't have good. They don't have defensemen. Let's be honest. There. They have no. What are who are their defensemen? Let's be honest here. Who Nikita does Nikita Nikita have? Mark Fain, Andrew Ferentz. Okay, Andrew Ferentz. Um, yeah. Justin Schultz. Justin Schultz, that's mm, four. Mm. You named one NHL defenseman, I think. Andrew One Ferentz. defenseman I would take on my NHL team. Yes, it is. So, closing words, Greg? Thanks for listening, guys. Once again, if you want a Christmas card, put it in the email. Email us. Last, last man, man in PC. PC at gmail.com. Correct. Tweet us at last man in PC. Your questions, concerns, anything? Anything. Maybe how you found us, because we'd be very interested and intrigued to know. Mm-hmm. And from all of us here at Cameron's house. <laughs> yeah. Actually, before we finish this, how much do you want to bet Dan listens to this episode? We don't know if Dan listens. Yeah. Because we both listen. No one. I listen like, that's to how it. I've kind of, like, I feel like I've gotten better since like the first time. Yeah, we definitely this. have. But how, like... Do you I listen to it twice because I have to edit it and then I have to release it. Yeah. Well, let's make it. Well, we have to see. No one tweet at Dan to tell him or text him or anything. Well, no one tweets at us anyways. I know, but don't. Don't do it. How would we How would we know? How do we know? How would we know? Well, what Dan, tell us. What's the bet, though? Okay, well, first of all, I want to know his opinion on Chris Thorburn. I wanted to answer a couple questions. First of all, what does Edmonton need to do to... Uh, to fix their team. Okay. What should the Jets do about Chris Thorburn? And would you want to see a Kane for JVR trade? Boom. If he can even answer one of those questions. Next podcast, we'll start with, Hey, Dan, could you answer any of the questions I asked on the last podcast? And if his answer is no, we know he didn't listen. That son of a B. Do you think he'll listen? No. See, neither do I. We're terrible friends. We're awful. We're terrible people. I'm sorry, Daniel. All right. Thanks for listening. Have a good one.